Hey there. Welcome to the next installment of a never-ending set of episodes that make up the playlist Punkin' the Junk Pile Arch Top. Now, I want you to pay attention. I have my shirt on. Ask about my free surgical procedure. People ask me, what is that? I say, what do you need? And they just look at me funny like I'm not good at surgical procedures. Well, you know what, son? The fact that my current mother-in-law is still alive says I've gotten a lot, lot better than I used to be. Anyway, you see this shirt? You see a restaurant hat? That means something is going to be destroyed. I mean destroyed. And then the final telltale sign is I got a batch. I don't want to spill it. You see that? Let me have Chick Flick Teal point. Anyway, there is Chick Flick Teal linen binding strap prevention, cleat call, whatever you want to call it. When you see that stuff, you know that there's going to be blood and guts ahead. We are in installment number four. Four. In this playlist, we talked about how grody this thing was in the first episode. We took the neck off in the second episode. We took the back off in the third episode. And now in this fourth episode, we're going to look at how to put this together. You see, there's still blood stains in there from the factory in 1962, second half of 1962. But... You'll remember that there was, I'm leaning in and out of the picture so much, it's like you're seeing me for the first time <laughs> again over and over. Isn't that special? Anyway, you see where that brace was? You see it's a different color here than it was here? That's because this part had detached these two other ones held together, and this thing was bowing up in the middle like a big old pumpkin flute. That's like... A part, a bulbous part that extends out of a trunk. Uh, some dicotyledonous plants have that. Monocotyledonous needus, blah, blah, blah. Plants don't have that. Trust me on that because I am a palmero. Anyway, we are going to take this thing here and we are going to restore the arch on the back of this guitar. Now, You'll remember, I built this thing right over here in episode one. Yeah, that says CTF. It's CTF certified, meaning Chick Flick Teal Pointer has said seal of approval. Anyway, front and back. I'm going to show you how to take this, a steam line, and some clamps, and get this thing ready to be fixed on the inside. There's going to be stuff here that you have never seen before because it takes a special kind of ignorance to dip below the Captain Obvious level. That's the horizon of Captain Obvious level to go below that to come up with stuff that is so goofy simple that it is profound. Let's get to the workbench. All right, let's do this. I don't want to leave you hanging. Here's that batch of Chick Flick Teal linen muslin reinforcement stuff that you're going to see. You've seen it before on the Galliano Chung Pile. I'll try to give you a link to it right up there right about now. But a couple of things I want to show you here. We made this in episode one and it's going to be the framework for something that's going to allow us to manipulate that back of that body back into shape. You're wondering how? Well, don't hit the panic button, Pudnas. Let me show you something here. I got this piece of wood. You see that? It's a piece of wood. It's been used before plenty of times. I got this drill bit. This one right here. I'm going to drill a hole right there. It's called a test hole. I want to make sure that this steaming needle from the Mr. Coffee steamer hiding in the corner over here will fit snugly into that. Like so. You see that? That's because I am going... To make sure that I have confirmed that that fits, we are going to drill a hole 
in this tool that we made. Now, you always want to make sure that you're going to get the surgery, the test surgeries done on patients that don't matter that much, like this one, before you get to the big uh, patient, the money, the pay baby patient. So this is a blackboard, you see that? Now, you will see right here that I have made a cross, which is not the same as this, but destined to become a religious artifact no matter what could have been in my shop. Now, I have lifted this up where it's hollow under here. I am going to drill a hole right there. You see that right there? I'm going to go around to the side and do the little bit of this. So nothing chipped away. Oh, look, perfect. Does that surprise you? No, it shouldn't. Now, you will see that this scraparatus right here, with all the other stuff falling on the ground, will fit through there. Do you see that? Do you see what's happening? Yes, you do. Now, what we are going to need to do is we are going to grab, I have the most awesome, awesome tool set up over here. It's getting better all the time, but I have these clamps. So I'm going to want to be able to put this through here, and I'm going to want to hold it in there. So I'm going to use a clamp like that. You with me? Good. Okay, let's take a look here. Before we get rolling, it's like having new kids in the class every day, but I do have to explain it. The rest of you serve, uh, this will serve as a reminder for the test because this stuff will be on the test. This was here. This was here. This bows up about that much. This does not. So one of these had cut loose. Now, we've got to get all of this stuff off here. You can tell where... The guitar didn't cut loose and you had the factory hide glue here, like here. And then you had this stuff where someone tried to glue it up with tight bond instead of hide glue. I love tight bond when it comes to necks and scarf joints and things that you'll never need to do anything with. But this is not the best stuff. So what we're going to do is we've got to get this nice and smooth here. You want to be careful with this because this is creasing right here. And you also had a, a part that was basically completely missing off here. There are remnants of tight bond right there. Notice the difference in color between that and this brown. And so I'm going to take, you can take any number of things. You can take a razor blade that has tape on it. The tape gives you a width that you want to set. And it's got enough thickness of the tape to go around and protect the rest of it. So if you're really close and you want to do this and you want to get really close to your finger and, and cut yourself or you can use it as a scraper like this. But the bottom line is this needs to be nice and smooth. I've got this fancy thing that I got from Harbor Freight. Look at that. It is a belt sander that is very uh, small and you can just go around the edge like this. I want to tell you something about these, especially if you're getting into corners like in cigar boxes where the neck is going to go. It matters whether this is here, here, or here, depending on whether you want to get in the corner. If you get in the corner on something and it's going the wrong way, you will cut your belt. I'm going to turn the volume off and you can watch what's happening here. This thing is handy.
All right, that was pretty slick. Now you want to remember that right over here we had that crack. It was running right next to the body. You see that right there? That was actually off the guitar. So we want to be careful with that. And then I've got a couple of little gadgets here. They're called straight boards. I like oak boards. And I put different grades of coarseness of sandpaper on them so I can take an area like this and go across like so. And uh, when it comes to the body, when I do the other side, I'm, I'm gonna have to do the same thing. When that time comes, that time comes, I can go across the whole body like this and make sure that everything is level. But something like this comes in really handy right here. And if you got a little part that's popping up, you don't want to break through the glue, but you can take a razor blade and get the part that's sticking up. We want this to be able to glue flat to the kerfing when we go to put the body back on the rest of the body. So let's get this nice and smooth now because we're actually going to have to mate this. Come on guys, regular to this. I think you're starting to see the idea. We know that this sits on here like so. Except this part right here is arched up. Can you see that? So, if I take this and take some of these clamps and clamp them right at the edge like this and over here that slipped a little bit it's okay like this and clamp this down everything is going to be fine until we get to this part right here. See this part right here? This is not gonna wanna to sit down without putting extra pressure where the cracks are. See, this one's gonna wanna run all the way up here. Do you see that? Notice I'm being serious now. So what's gonna happen is, we're gonna put that steam line in there, just a needle of it right there, and we're gonna eject steam in here and this wood is going to soften up and we're just going to go around and add more clamps as we go until it wants to behave and sit down without cracking anymore. Now we're going to go on the inside here and we're going to put some steam or we're going to put some tape along these cracks so they don't want to open up anymore. We'll do the same thing out here and then we're going to start injecting steam into this thing. Now when you're putting this tape on, you want to try and pull the body together as much as you can. It's not really critical because we're going to fix these, these cracks with cleats and chick flick teal linen reinforcement. But you can see as this body flattens out, if I were just to try and glue this up as it is without bowing it up, it could be difficult to do because the more you flatten something or other, you see how that opens up. So the whole trick to it is to get it to go back to where it was and you can do that by arching it up like that. So the arch restores. So I'm gonna put my fat belly on over here. We're gonna get, we're gonna put that one down and we're gonna bow this the way it wants to be. Now, later on, when I'm fixing the cleats, I could actually put cloth or something underneath here to get that arch to stay like so. But the main thing we want to do right now is get that steam to stay in there without making the crack wider. Because that's one of the potential outcomes, the crack gets wider. There we go. Okay guys, before we get to clamp, and you want to remember, we're going to put the steam line in there. So if it's necessary that we need to clamp that down, we've got the clamp here. And it needs to be able to fit in here without raising up above 
this. You see that? So this would fit down in there if I need it to stay in there, like so. Um, when it comes to clamps, guys, I really like these big spring clamps because they're not going anywhere. I've got two clamps here that I'm going to put in first. They're powerful. I want to get this lined up. I want to go right to the edge like that. Notice I'm being serious here once. Okay. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to keep... It's really important that these stay in the right spot and that they don't leak out. We don't want this to blow up. Some of the steam can escape. But the main thing is to keep these edges tight. So I like these big spring clamps. Now they're a little bulky, but they're going to work for what we need. And just go around. Don't clamp this down yet. Where it starts to curve a little bit, you can leave those alone until we get the steam rolling in here. Then, and only then, do we want to start clamping because that way this is going to heat up and steam up and it won't want to split. Okay guys, you want to remember this is steam, it's hot. See there's hot water coming out of there. So I'm just going to bridge this up here and I'm going to put that inside of our hole right there and we're just going to steam this. It's that simple. Now you're going to start seeing steam coming out of here and there you'll be able to feel this getting warm as you go doesn't hurt to have a rag around we're just going to let this steam up and as it goes yeah there's steam coming out of the edge over there we just can go on like so clamp those edges down it's going to take a little bit okay I can feel everything heating up in here and um, we're just adding clamps as we go and you can hear the steam starting to not escape so much here and I can tell what's going on by looking at the edge so this it used to be way up here now it's yeah much better I'm going to empty the steamer out on this thing and we will leave it sit for at least a day. Oh, did I tell you in my minutia of instructions, in my minutia, that means multiple, of instructiones, that we would leave the clamps on while we leave it sit for at least a day. Okay, guys, so while we are waiting for that back to readjust to the way we just bent and twisted it, it's time to take a look at the bottom of the guitar. Now, there's going to be a couple of cracks that we talked about having to fix. That one right there. And then there's a one inside that's kind of creeping up on us right here that hasn't made it to show itself up on the top yet that much it's down in this contoured area but it will we are still processing a batch of reinforcing linen that is chick flick teal we're going to boil that out and dry it but that is how we'll deal with some of the stuff but one of the things we really need to be able to do is give this guitar an opportunity to level itself back out because anything that we're going to glue down and clamp that's not right will adjust and twist and torque around so you can see that the factory stuff is right here 
where it glued out. And then there's some breakout, and that's mostly where the uh, tight bond repair was made. And again, you can see it, it all leaked right down there. Uh, but we are going to sand this down and get rid of some of this stuff. We are also going to do a new batch of hide glue. We're going to use our guitar Botox needle and we're just going to go around and make sure that everything is is okay here. We're going to take a um, a tool here and get rid of this stuff that's brittle because it all pops off pretty easily and steel brush it and do everything we can to put this back together in a way that's uniform. But I think where we need to start here is figure out that some of this kerfing is going to need to be cut out where there's gaps. There's a gap right here where there never was any. You can see that. We're going to end up putting a pickup on this thing, so we're going to end up taking off the strap button. We're going to do um, an end pinned uh, jack where it's, where it's got a strap button built into it. I don't trust these things. I never have. We're going to put probably black hardware on this thing for the color theme I'm thinking, but any of these areas here that are missing pieces of kerfing, we're going to replace that. That's going to involve taking and cutting this very carefully. And you're getting into the sides now. The sides of these guitars are very, very, well, let's just say flimsy because without anything else, they turn... Yeah, you can see this stuff is very brittle after all these years, especially the way it's dried out. It's just come along like this. But we work on these sides. We're going to end up having to cut this down and then getting the side flat and putting in a new piece of kerfing here and there. I really don't like building it up. I'd rather cut out anything that's missing. But we're going to end up taking, again, a piece of sandpaper. And you can tell that there's gaps underneath. Let me tilt this up and show you. You don't get to see this stuff very often, guys. So you can tell there's a gap right there underneath there. So when the kerfing is bad, we're going to fix all that up. I'll give you bits and pieces of here, but this is monotonous. But we're going to start off with our friend here. The, on these areas that the sides are built up with all this hide glue and stuff or... or tight bond where it never come together. Again, watch which way the belt is turning here because it will snag up on you and, and do that back and forth. Anytime you feel this thing vibrating, slow down a little bit because you can end up actually pulling pieces out of the sides and stuff and causing cracks. Anyway, I'll give you bits and pieces as we go. A little tip about sanding this, you can see here that the body, there's a spot right there where the side of the body is kind of split away from the kerfing. And so if I'm going like this, listen to the noise you're going to hear here. You hear that? That's something vibrating. So if you can, what you want to do is, again, you have a piece that's enough to go across the body. You want to do this kind of a motion either way instead of this back and forth because all that's going to do is pull everything loose but you can go across this and figure out by watching where you're getting contact like so and then it's just a matter of taking whatever tool you feel comfortable with and getting a score line where you want to replace some binding or some kerfing and coming along and cutting out the section you want. This whole section from here to here is low. I would like to keep um, 
this section to glue to that's original right here. Can you see that? Sometimes I'm always not aware of what the camera angle is. But I can come in here and carve that down and get it down to the side and then glue a new piece of kerfing in right there and bend it around and I think I want to cut it out to about right here. And this kerfing is available from your luthier supplies. It doesn't have to be exactly in line this way but it does need to be level against the edge. So there are a number of tools that I have. There's a really good file that Stumac makes and you just stand it up Pay attention to the angle you got on your work, but I'm going to have some kerfing to replace. I'm going to put a little spot here. I'm going to replace this section from here to here, and then there's one section right there. The rest of it is going to look okay, really. So while we are waiting on our hide glue heater to heat up over here, we are going to do a little bit of work on the old hide glue here because it feels like it's starting to cut loose in some places. So we'll just take a scraper and then go along with a sponge sander and touch some of this stuff up and then we're going to fill up our injector and get down in there. Also, while we're here, yeah, that's real brittle. You can hear it. We are also going to, remember this overpass thing where these uh, arches try to collapse? Well, we're going to build one of those that drops right down in there about where we're going to put the the pickup we're going to mount a low profile pickup on this thing and this will keep everything together um i got a secret about how to match this to this arch to this particular guitar all righty the hide glue is heated up and we're going to get these pieces of kerfing on here. The whole thing is just a matter of making sure that the sides and the kerfing or level. Take something and do that. And then the working glue, the working time on the hide glue is substantial. So you just kind of come along every few minutes and see if anything is moving around in a way you don't want it to.
over here we got a pretty good sized piece so we will paint glue on thick both sides back of the curving and There we go. Get a little bit of that squeeze out off of there. And we will put these office binder clamps work really well. We'll put one of those in the middle. And we'll make sure everything is level here. We'll put one of those there. Loosen this up just a tad like so. There we go. Now, this is a little bit tedious, but it's kind of like caulking things. We're just going to take our syringe, and just like a caulking gun, you're just going to go along and lay a bead just like so. And it will flow in pretty good. It's a weird noise, but we just take a corner of a wet rag and boom that will make all the difference and i hope everything goes good for the next 60 years here we go now we do not want to forget the head block and tail block that's for sure get that down in there and also the tone bars little bead in there and make sure there's nothing that there's no gaps you really don't want a tone bar coming loose get one of those glued back into an arch top is no fun there we go Okay, once you get all your little pieces in and you have given it 15 minutes or so to kind of get set up, you want to make sure that you take something that's level and just go along and make sure that there's nothing sticking up high or proud, as they would say, and make sure that all of your stuff is clamped down good. Go to every one. Don't forget anything. I glued a couple small ones in here at the head block and tail block where things were missing and this glue will drift a little bit if you're not paying attention so just let it set up just a tad and go along and make sure that everything is good okay another little trick here you've got these little cracks that I showed you one over here that was uh, trying to come through it wasn't shown to the front very much yet but we just injected that with the syringe with hide glue and now I'm going to show you a little trick you take one of these spun these little suction cups you can usually buy these to hang like decorations on glass windows or something like that you wet that a little bit now people tell you you pump the hide glue in with this no you don't do that because if you push down and pull up and it 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 pumps up and down like an oil field pump jack so what you do is you just wet it and you press down and you come along in one sweeping motion several times and what that will do is it will push the glue down into the crack and we're going to come along in a little bit once that dries some, we're going to put some reinforcement over it. We just want to make sure it dries smooth like that. There's one right here that we're going to cleat. It's about time to put this on the other side and take a look at measuring something when this glue dries up here. This is going to be tricky because we're going to make one of these. So let me show you from the top here. If you 
take a pencil and you put it in this washer, like so, and you run that washer edge, the pencil and washer are going to cover the angle of the art. So you're just going along like this, and you'll get that angle like so. You see here? So what it's telling us is we need to take this part right here and cut this out. And it's on a slight curve. You can see that. So when you flip this upside down on the other side, this part being gone, now is this part that's lower here and this part here is pretty easy. Okay, you can see that there's a radius up here. I've marked the middle of this and I put a mark in the middle of the bottom of the soundboard, which is the measurement from the outside of this tone bar to the outside of this tone bar. And laying this here, this kind of looks like this. So when I line that mark up, I'm going to want to notch out. Be careful of which side because the side that is radius is going to go down. So I'm going to make a mark there, there, and there, and there, and then notch out these down to a depth of here, and the tone bar support will just roll over like this and drop down. Then I will run doweling through here once I get it lined up on here. We want to line this up with the uh, soundboard of the guitar, not with each other. The doweling doesn't matter. It's just we got to get this on here and be seated right where all of this is in contact with this stuff. We know that this area right here is weak and prone to splitting. We're going to fix that, but this is really going to help us out because you know I'm going to put beefy strings on this. Okay, so we have fitted this and sanded it and, and done everything we need to do. And it fits in here snugly like this and it comes right up. If you'll notice right here, when I pinch this down, it makes this sit right where there's not an offset. So when I glue that, it's going to be okay. We'll gap these out a little bit where one of them will sit right behind the F hole here and one here and one out here. And this is kind of where our pickup is going to be. It's going to be a surface mount pickup. But we can adjust this to any way we want. We want to remember that these curve down as they go, so we'll keep them fairly close. But at this point, yeah, that's nice and snug. We're going to drill a hole right here and right here through both of these. And that way the dowels will work like this. This was for a bit bigger arch top, but that's where we're going. All right, there's a B here and a T here. Bass, treble, one on each side. This flips up. The heavy strings are here. The bass side is here. So we just fit that right there. Notice how that crack just basically disappeared. We are going to glue that up and move this back just a little bit. You see, these things are nice and tight. That's what you want. They glue to the brace. This one comes in over here. No, notice it's got to be. Now, we want these things to be situated and settled to the bottom of the soundboard or the top of the guitar. And then once that's done, we can put these pins in like so and cut those off the way this one's giving me some hell. The way they need to be when everything is lined up like that, cut those off, cut those off, and all we need is a coat of Chick Flick Teal. This is a secret. Shh. Okay, guys, it is the next day, and it doesn't get to be any better of a day than today. We've got the stuff glued up. It all came together well, good, whatever you want to call it. Um, hey, check this out. Remember this gadget? You don't? Well, you should. You put this on the back tail block, and you put this where the neck goes, or where the end of the body goes, 
and then you put a mark and you actually convince the guitar that it has a back on when it doesn't. Why would you do that, you ask? Well, you'll know in a little bit. Anyway, remember the overpass structure we built? Yeah, it's done. Why the blue tape, you may ask? Yes, you may, because this is the base side. You'll notice here that I have made a mark where the bridge was. You can see the shadow even though the bridge was on after the guitar was allowed to dry out in the most inhumane way. Anyway, what that means is the edge of the bridge is right here and here. It'd be ideal to have this overpass structure right in there. Oh, like that. Look, it would also be nice to have that overpass structure pressed down and make this crack right here along the F hole be fine. And wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if I had the Beach Boys in here to sing wouldn't it be nice every time I said wouldn't it be nice because I'm saying that a lot today to have Granny's iron there. When I glue that in, yes, wouldn't it be nice. Wouldn't it be nice while we're singing wouldn't it be nice? to have some chick flick teal reinforcing muslin. Well, I do. That is nice, isn't it? Now, these spaces where the kerfing was replaced, wouldn't it be nice to just take a board and make sure that everything was flat with the rest of the body there? And there you see, little to no effort, I can do them both at once because I'm just that sharp. There's a little one there and one there. So we're all good. Now, here's the deal. I've got the hide glue heated up. And I want to take my brush and... I want to deal with some of these places where we've got, let's just say, issues. So I'm going to take some of this Chick Flick Teal muslin stuff here, and I need a piece for right there. So let's call it that, like so. This muslin has a weave of both this way and this way. And this was something they did back in the old days. You will see that sometimes when there's splits on the sides and things, that they would use cloth like this instead of using cleats. So we've got that little split right here. Now I need something that's not going to be too thick. It's going to give me a little bit of... of space here so when I push this down it will seal this crack up right here which will then be reinforced by this notice there is no paint on the glue surfaces glue doesn't stick well to painted surfaces so you can see where that crack is right there I'm just going to bring it and get it down into that crack. This hide glue is nice and hot. Like so. Now, I really don't want to bleed too much of it all the way through because I am going to finish the top of this guitar with some rather fine technique. There we go. I have a brush that doesn't have hide glue on it because I want it to stick everywhere there. And we'll follow this through to here. There we go. A lot of details here, guys, but I think that's what you want. If you don't, make comments below so I can delete them quickly. Now, you'll remember that we had 
this one up here is following the body. It's also on the contour of where the concave of the arch top drops down. So I am going to mark that off there. There we go. I'm glad I checked that. And we'll do the same thing here. We will get hot hide glue everywhere in this area here. And while we're here, yeah, you knew I was going to do this, right? Got some factory. I'm pretending it's second half of 1962. Anybody that's watched the stuff will understand that joke. Even if you're not laughing. Okay, we're going to, by the way, we're going to do that everywhere with this stuff. Got together anyway. There we go. There, we're going to let that set just a little bit, and then we're going to come over the top of it with hide glue. This stuff is very, very handy. You're going to see us use more of it here in a minute. What's nice about it is when you have grain that's running like this and you want to put something in to go across the grain to stop it from splitting, it's not about that it just starts splitting and jumps into a big crack overnight. It's that constant over a period of time stuff that's going to get you. Yeah, like I'm going to get you tight bond. You see that? One way or another. All right. People are saying, why are you doing this well? We know the guitar dried out, right? I want to turn this guitar a little bit once I get past this area and show you something that is a sure sign that we needed something. Now, if you look right there, that tight bond drizzled into here expanded which makes me wonder gorilla glue does that it foams up and it created a crack right there and that means you might have to paint a happy little hide glue right in that area no in all seriousness some of these glues foam up i know gorilla glue foams up and it went right in there which led to this little crack here Remember this, I said this once, I'll say it again. This guitar dried out for quite some time. You could see that the, that the old hide glue is chipping right off. And so we're just going to go to every area and brush it. Just like so. I can see some gap right there. This is going to be a really critical area, this head block, especially with the tail block too. You're going to find that out in a couple minutes because putting the neck on, people don't believe how much these bodies move one way or another. You can see it flexing like that. And when you put the neck back on, you can really, really make a difference yeah there's some gaps right there this will take care of all that there'd be nothing worse there's one right there there's nothing worse than putting the back on and then figuring out you have to take it back off that happened with the galliano junk pile if you'll remember right 
Now we squirted some glue right next to the tone bars with our syringe. We're going to take this opportunity one more time to make sure that we get those as well. I'm going to turn this over once the tone bars are done and get the underside of the top or actually it's the curving for the back of the guitar. Now you might be saying well you've just ruined the acoustic quality of this guitar. Well this guitar is not special. I do that with every guitar I touch, right? I'm going to make sure that wherever I've put a new piece of curfing, that I get to the sides and where it meets the old curfing. I want to make sure that I get that real good. I don't want that popping off inside the guitar. Like I said, arch tops are a nightmare work on the inside of things that's why only us crazy ones do it all right there's the last of the tone bar and sides and top and and everything else and this hide glue on the chick flick teal muslin strips has had enough time to get sticky and not move around so I'm going to come in here and get that coated like so this one up here was very important because it was starting to come through the body just want to make sure that none of this is going to come off in the future now while I'm doing this part I'm going to tell you that it's time to put you can see right here you see that I was trying to press up a little bit there where that crack is on the F hole right there so this is the base side of course that's where things always break up this is going to drop down and it's going to press that down so this is going to give this a little bit of thickness to push that down onto itself and I have the back side tape too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some glue on here. I'm not going to glop it all over the place, but just enough to get everything to stick a little bit. How'd you like that word? Glop it all over the place. Yeah, we're just going to do that right there. I have a template for, for these, by the way. Um, each individual guitar is going to need some work when it comes time for the cutouts depending on what they put where they put the tone bars in because that wasn't something that they were real critical with but any of these guitars that have these tone bars I've got a harmony that you're going to see I call it the house paint harmony it's a harmony Catalina but that's okay there we go that Harmony Catalina has um, some issues where the top is collapsing. So that'll drop right there. So I'm going to put a little bit here, like so. I want to make sure that the tone bars lock in. There we go. There, we can see that that's pressing up right here yes lovely all righty winner winner chicken dinner and this is going to be a moment of truth as well because we're going to take all the clamps off and see if our little experiment to get this bow in this back of this guitar was successful. Be right back. Never enough clamps.
All right. Look at that. Ooh, ah. That worked great. Tony the Tiger even thought it was great. Okay. Moment of truth here. Now, if I can get these to close up, I just, oh, look at that. Yeah. That's going to work out just fine. So what we're going to do with this now is I am going to use some Chick Flick Teal reinforcing fabric. And we're going to pull this together and we're going to put one here, one here, and one here. And then once that's in place, we'll clamp all this together like so. Look how that comes together. And then once that's all together, we will work on these individual ones. But I want the whole thing to come around together as a unit and maybe use some big giant rubber band to kind of hold the radius together like that. Okay, I've got the strips that are going to get our cracks closed up about where I want them. We can put these cross bracing. It's not really the word to use, but linens. You'll be surprised when you start getting into some of these older guitars how prevalent this was. Again, you are trying to stop cracks and splits that run with the grain in something that's pressed. This was not hand carved, so you had a solid piece of wood that was pressed down on a machine. And when you get these curves and stuff that aren't carved, they are going to kick back at you a little bit. So I'm just going to put these here. I know it's ugly, but take a look back in your yearbook and look at some of the dates you went on on, and that'll make you feel much better. I'm going to get this done, and I'll close this out because the next one, we put this all together. You're going to see why we did some of this crazy stuff. Help. All right, guys, I'm going to end this episode here because the next steps are going to be a little bit convoluted. We are going, you can see that mess that's going on over there. We have to line the neck up and we're actually going to bolt it on and get it with a good back angle like so. So we never have to worry about lowering a bridge or whatever. You saw that. I think you can see it right there. Yeah. You see that overpass is built there on the underside of the arch of the uh, of the soundboard or top of this guitar. And what that's going to do is it's going to give the bridge, the floating bridge, the ability to squat down once it's sanded to the top because that top's still a little bit warped and whatever. But we're going to be able to put some big heavy strings on this thing. And in order to get the neck set right, you actually have to have the body just right. We're going to talk about this. I've talked about it in the Galliano thing. Again, there's playlists up there. When your body is apart, where the head block and tail block are, those areas can squat and move around, and they pitch just a little bit. That head block down here pitches a little bit, and that will change the neck angle drastically. So we are actually going to put a piece of wood between the head block and the tail block, so the guitar thinks the back is still on, and then we'll put the rest of it together. While, we're, while we've got this open, we're going to do the electronics and reinforce those areas and that kind of thing. Run the grounding wire out of the tail block where it will hook into the input jack in the back and, and, and do the things that we can do on the inside. And if we're going to bolt the neck on, we're not going to screw it on. We're going to bolt it on. We're going to use industrial level stuff because... 
I am a professional. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Is there somebody that's got something out there, a guitar that I cannot fix? Please. I'm going to have to start looking in Europe or something.